Well, this is one new series that I'm not so comfortable talking about, but I know that even though I'm not comfortable talking about it, it has got to be aired out. We've got to deal with this. In life, the topics that we avoid talking about are perhaps the most important topics at the end of the day. And so I want us to discuss about personal finances vis-a-vis the pursuit of purpose. What happens in between our personal finances, especially if we're pursuing our purpose and it's actually making us quite a bit, quite a chunk of money? What do we do in there? What are the disciplines that we need and so on? I'm so going to do this series maybe for five or so episodes, but we want to learn. The reason as to why I'm hesitant to talk about this thing is because probably I am not financially free at the moment as I should be. But I'm on the journey to get there. So anyway, we're going to trudge along. And the disclaimer is that I don't know everything there is to know about finances. But it is an, a topic that needs to be talked about. Stay tuned. Welcome to the Life Signatures Podcast with Lawrence Namale. Lawrence is a life coach, author, and keynote speaker who loves to tackle different topics on purpose, productivity, and resilience. His mission in life is to awaken all your boundless possibilities available in you. Life Signatures Podcast is dedicated to bring to reality every single person who knows that deep down in their gut, there's got to be more to life than this. And now, here is your host, Lawrence Namale. Of course, when it comes to personal finances, there's so much to talk about and there's quite a lot of information out there in the streets. I'm telling you, you read Rich Dad, Poor Dad, you read uh, Rich Couples Get uh, Finished Rich. And I mean, there are very many writers. If you read in our own local um, authors, you have Moses Mukisa talking about uh, financial freedom. You've got uh, James Abola in Uganda, both of those guys. In Uganda, talking about finances, and then we have Amos uh, Wainaina in Kenya talking about finances. There's just a lot of material as far as personal finances are concerned. But given that I am passionate about purpose, I'm gonna wing this and I talk about it from the angle of our own purpose. I am not, again, making uh, making a disclaimer. I am not talking from this angle of being an expert and know it all, neither am I talking from I am standing on this summit, I have done it, I have shot the movie, I've got the video, I've got the t-shirt for it. No, I'm a fellow sojourner and uh, there are some messes that I've done in my personal finances and I want us to learn together if we are going to grow in terms of our purpose and our finances. So that's what this series is all about. Finances and purpose. Now, I'm going to use some examples. And of course, I'm going to use the popular examples. American examples, so to speak. Mike Tyson, George Foreman. These were heavyweight boxing champions in their heyday. They were seriously big names. George Foreman was compared to Muhammad Ali and the two, Foreman and Ali, went to Zaire, present day, uh, what is it called, DR Congo, to do what their promoter, I think, Don King, he called it the Rumble in the Jungle. The other day, Floyd Money Mayweather and Conor McGregor had a go at each other. 2017 around there but let me tell you it had absolutely nothing on those two it had nothing on the rumble in the jungle both i and mike tyson and george foreman were paid millions 
of dollars for their exploits and both faced major setbacks financially in their careers both declared bankrupt so much so that george foreman at some point in time he was street preaching he had no dime and of course both of these boxers later on i, I talked a serious series i mean i wrote more than 10 articles on michael on mike tyson's comeback but george foreman also had his own comeback financially so much so that he's dealing with grills he's selling grills of an ilk that nutritionists and doctors are recommending the world over now the difference in is in how both handled their money it is easy for george foreman and tyson to employ people to manage their finances however if you personally are not involved in the daily management of your monies chances are that your purpose will suffer a major hit i've talked about purpose all this while i've talked about you know a life of purpose how to get purpose how to discover your purpose the eight steps of discovering your purpose and how to monetize that particular purpose and so on but there's one thing in fact one of the reasons as to why people don't pursue purpose is because they don't get money from it immediately but now we are flipping it and we're talking about what do you do when the money is coming in and the purpose is paying up what do you do when you are reaping highly you have got to be seriously directly involved in the financial management of your vision and of your life personal management of your finances is absolutely critical and very many passionate visionaries get their purpose in life messed up because they do not have a firm grip on the ins and outs of their monies and personal financial freedom and management is an absolute must it's a key thing and that's why you do not need to wait until you're getting billions or millions or hundreds of thousands so that you can have a financial advisor or you can maybe you don't afford him now but you can afford his books right i'm not a financial advisor but i'm i'm talking about these things because they touch on our lives and they touch on our purpose he can you can buy his books you can start getting mentored by the articles he writes or by the videos she videos she shoots and by her facebook channel by her instagram channel by her whatever okay financial advisors maybe they're not on instagram but they could be on facebook and they could be on linkedin and you can get advice from them using their slide share and, and stuff like that way before the money starts flowing my point is that if you are not physically involved in the money and knowing the ins and outs of your money even if it's not there if there are no disciplines in it when the money does come it actually does come eventually for the people of purpose if you stay with it 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 eventually comes and it comes by droves you're paid like mike tyson better guy out of prison he was just out of prison and he better guy for 29 min 29 seconds a guy was called mcneely mcneely was down in 29 minutes and in 29 seconds sorry and tyson was paid a gazillion okay he was paid millions in 29 seconds what did tyson do you know what tyson did he had suits and for every color of suit that tyson had he bought a corresponding rolls royce you know how much a rolls royce costs it's a custom made vehicle in the whole of uganda i have seen i've stayed in uganda for how many years 10 plus years but i've seen one rolls royce i'm talking one i'm talking one rolls royce in the whole country you know how much that thing costs it's a custom made vehicle but this man called mike tyson bought a rolls royce corresponding to the color of the suits he had maybe he had seven of them he will buy a rolls royce corresponding to each that is not prudence in terms of finances so it is not an event money 
with your purpose is not necessarily an event. A pursuer of purpose will need to intentionally adopt another mode with the finances that is to invest in the long term, having that mode of long term investments. And the difference between the two things is that one is an event and the other is a process. Nearly all humans are naturally on the spend mode. That's one thing. The other one is invest. By default, we are on the spend mode. In other words, if we are not intentional, even when you're getting these hundreds, you're not even in the thousands, but you're getting these hundreds. If you don't have inculcated inside of you the lifestyle of investments, the default mode of spending takes over almost always without fail. That is our default mode. We become like a Tyson. And sometimes we buy stuff that we don't even need to please people who don't care about us. In fact, to please people we hate with money that we don't have. That's a, a paraphrase from a, a financial guru called Dave Ramsey. But you get my point. There is an event which is spending. There is a process which is investing. The fun is in the spending. It is easy and it's fun to spend. The more arduous and disinviting is the process of investing. Why? Because number one, it's risky. Number two, it's for the future. You, it's uncertain. But spending, are you kidding me? I'm seeing the Nike over there. I'm going to pay and going to get it. It's there. I'm, I mean, I'm going to own it. I'm seeing the car in the showroom. Are you kidding me? I'm going to give them the money and going to give me the car. It's fun. One of the biggest uh, so-called uh, hobbies for people is shopping. In fact, sometimes it's therapeutic until it's addictive to some people. What I'm saying is that you can choose between investing or you can choose between an event of in, uh, an event of spending or a process of investing which one will you go for as a person of purpose you need to have the habit the behavior the discipline inculcated in you i am not saying you should not spend i am saying there got to be the long term look of financial freedom the long term doesn't come in a flash and i'm going to talk about this even as we continue it comes in a process it's not an event the biggest problem with people and their finances is that they're waiting for an event such as winning a lottery your uncle or you never knew gives you uh, an inher inheritance or uh, what happens uh, you know you get a, a contract from just out of the blue you think an event is going to help you and many people are looking at these events while all the time they have in their in their capacity in their power the ability to initiate a process a trickle process which is going to lead to financial freedom or even if it's not going to lead to financial freedom it's going to create a good discipline for your finances so that when the money comes there are channels already for tunneling that money in so that it can be good for you it can accrue it can lead to your financial freedom at the end of the day so these are the things we're going to talk about in this new series and uh, i've just introduced it gonna delve into them we have uh, three or four episodes to go but uh, for today that's the introduction stay tuned <music> Thank you for listening to Life Signatures Radio. If you enjoyed today's show, subscribe to Life Signatures Radio on iTunes, Stitcher, or visit our website at lifesignatures.libsyn.com. Life Signatures Radio, fresh, clean, and inspiring.